In today's video, I'm gonna give you a tour of my personal fifth wheel, the Salem Hemisphere 378 FL. Now this is identical to the Wildwood Heritage Glen 378 FL. They're sister products, just different branding on the outside. I've owned this for about two years, and I remember when we were looking to purchase it, it was really hard to find detailed information online about the unit. And so today I'd like to share as an owner after having it for about two years, some of the pros and cons to this particular floor plan. So it's gonna be a detailed, longer video. You might wanna grab a bowl of popcorn, uh, but I will include some chapter markers so you can skip around if you need to there. Now you're gonna see some things in this tour today that are not standard on the 378 FL out of the factory. They're not options offered, things that, that I've upgraded or modded over the years to make it more livable. And so I'll try to notate those in the video by playing a sound effect like this one here. Uh, no, not that one. Yeah, that, that one. So every time there's an upgrade or mod that I've done, I'll play that sound effect and put a little title at the bottom. And that way you kind of know that it's something that didn't come standard from the factory on the 378 FL. But if you could do me a favor, if there's an upgrade or mod that you really like or you'd like some more information on, if you can let me know in the comments below, and that'll kind of give me an idea if there's any interest in doing some other videos that would be helpful to the community on some of those specific upgrades in mods. All right, well, let's jump right in. I'll start out by giving you a look at the weight sticker so you get an idea of the weights on this particular unit. Again, this is the 378 FL. So you can see here, it's got a gross vehicle weight of just over 14,000 pounds. And this particular unit, you can see the manufacturer date there. It's got two 6,000 pound axles. And so you can do the math there, that leaves you with a little over 2,000 on the tongue weight. And when I've gone to cat stations and weighed ourselves all fully loaded, you know, with water, propane, everything, we tend to be about 25 to 2,700 pounds of tongue weight with everything loaded in. And then on the axles, it was right under 12,000 pounds. So it was, uh, I think it was 11.5 if I remember right. So pretty much a perfect scenario for this particular unit there. And you see on the tires, it's got two 16 inch uh, tires on both sides, the ST23580 R16, and they are filled to 80 PSI. All right, then over here on the pin box up here you can see the dry weight this was out of the factory just under 12,000 pounds that's going to change from unit to unit depending on the options and just what's in the particular unit that was made but let's start on the outside here and we'll just kind of work our way around so it'll be really informal so you can see the front cap there's a single piece of fiberglass and it is painted up there with some decals on it real nice the way it wraps around it's got a real nice aggressive stance and it does have these little cutouts here to make it easier for turning if you've got a short bed truck. And then you got your pin box here. Now it comes standard from the factory with uh, just a regular Lippert pin box, nothing fancy. And you can see here right now, it's got the Reese goose box, the 16,000 pound Reese goose box. Love that, great upgrade to put on your fifth wheel. And on the front cap, there is a little LED light little strip here that helps for docking or if you just want to light up your site a little bit more at nighttime there and this is almost uh, you could really consider it a full profile unit in the sense that it's got a straight roof line from the front all the way to the back and the overall height is just under 13.6 so pretty tall unit here so in the front you've got your storage here Got a nice little motion light here that you can program to come on at nighttime when it senses motion. Real bright LED light there. And let's take a look here in the storage compartment. All right, let me get some lights on in here. All right, so yeah, I've added some lights in there to make it a little bit brighter. And you can see here just a huge huge storage compartment up front. Now, originally when I bought it, the spare tire was mounted up inside here on the right in the back. And it really just, you know, just takes up a lot of space. And I don't see any reason on a straight frame fifth wheel like this one here, not to drop that tire below. And so I just easily relocated that tire, put a cover on it to keep it protected. But that just gives you a lot more storage space. And you can see you can easily fit you know, zero gravity chairs, going the width wise in there, plenty of room for, for all your, your tools and stuff. 
to bring along there. And then off to the one side, you can see the, the landing gear there on both the left and right. Now, originally this unit had two lead acid batteries and the second battery was right here and actually converted over to lithium ion and that freed up a little more space here in this storage compartment as well. You can see up on the top here, it's got some controls for the auto level system there, kind of a junction where everything goes together. And then hopping around to this side, you got your other landing jack. Very nice, large storage compartment. You can really fit a lot of things in there. And the lid just gets held up by that little prop right there. All right, then off to the side here on the driver's side, underneath the front, you've got the auto level controls. This does have the, the Lippert six point auto level. It's the electric version. Works great, never had any issues with it. Super helpful. When you're hitching up, it'll remember your hitch height, get your tongue up to the right height, so when you're backing under with your truck, it's all stored in the memory there. Really, really nice. And then you see on the landing gear, I've got these pads that snap on. I think they're called snap pads. Really nice product. You don't have to ever remove them or store them anywhere. You just keep them on your landing gear and you're good to go. Super helpful. All right, we'll walk down the driver's side here. So first compartment is gonna be your propane. And you're gonna have two 30 pound propane tanks right here with an auto changeover from the factory. That's how they come. Real easy access in there. And then right up after that, we've got our first storage compartment here. It's kind of like your wet bay slash storage. So you can see in here quite a bit of storage to help make things a little bit easier to get to. We've got an electric reel over there for the electric cord, not powered, but manual for the electric reel. And then same for the hose as well. These are really nice and just makes it super easy to roll up your uh, hoses and your cords when you're out camping. And you see this little storage bin there with some other miscellaneous items. And then the wet bay is mostly original what you're seeing there. I've just done a couple little mods there, changed out the the uh, shower, the outdoor shower there to one that you can actually remove and has a garden hose attachment on the other end. Just a little bit nicer in that respect. I did add a little water pump switch as, as well up here so I can turn off the water pump outside or inside the rig, just makes it real handy. And then I've added this nice filter here as well. This services the entire rig. And then I've got a lower pressure one that uh, filters even further for the, the filtered water spigot inside. You got your basic city water, your fresh water for the tank there. You got your water heater bypass valve for winterizing. And then this hose right here is your winterizing hose attached to the pump. And so you just divert the, the little hose right here, the little uh, ball valve, and then that'll siphon from this particular hose right here. And you've got some cable hookups here. Don't really use those a lot. And then a little flap here to get your hose outside to the outside. Pretty nice. I did add this outlet here, another GFI outlet here, just to make it real convenient to plug things in when you're working outside here in the wet bay area. And then put a motion light up here to brighten things up. It's really nice, you know, when you open your door in a storage compartment to walk in and just have that light come on automatically. Super nice. And then you can see kind of up over the, the back here, the wet bay, there's a, a residential pressure reducing valve, a PRV that I installed. And that way you don't have to worry about ever hooking up, you know, any filters or PRVs to your fresh water uh, or your city water connection rather. You just plug your hose in right directly to your campsite spigot and you are good to go. Now, if you're curious about those upgrades, I do have a video on that particular one. I'll put a link at the uh, the top of the screen there so you can see how that particular mod was done but that is the wet bay it's pretty nice you know i mean i think they could have had a little more separation here because you know when you're unhooking and hooking water there's always going to be some you know dripping and maybe a little bit of splashing here and there so i think some of the newer builds that i've seen have a little kind of like a drip pan right here that's fitted into this area and that way if any water does get in there it uh you know stays in the drip pan but uh, you can always just do things like siliconing around the perimeter just to make sure water doesn't get, you know, up under the, the wall there. So that is your wet bay. 
And then off to the side, you've got your water heater there. It's a 10 gallon, which is kind of nice. You know, a lot of rigs have six gallon water heaters. This one's a 10 gallon. So it just gives you a little bit more uh, for, the, for the hot water. It's a pretty standard hot water heater. It's got your electric on off for the electric element down there below. So you do have to walk outside when you're wanting to run on electric only and not gas, whereas the gas switch is inside. So I've seen some rigs where they put a, an electric switch inside the rig as well so that you can turn off and on your electric and gas from the inside. That's kind of a nice touch, but this one only has electric on the outside. All right, then directly below there, you've got a little storage for your stinky slinky. That one was added there, super easy. Just to tack that onto the bottom and just look for cross members to support it. And then you notice, of course, I've got all the slides pushed in right now. So uh, we'll, we'll pull them out here once we're done with the outside, but this is part of the kitchen slide. So you've got a vent up there for your range hood and you can clip this guy in there. You can see it's kind of popped open right now, but it, you know, it's so high up there. It's one of those things you almost forget about and it really doesn't seem to harm it by leaving it open, you know, while you're in transport. That is the kitchen slide. And then you can see one of your stabilizing auto level jacks there. And then it does have a little port here for the, uh, for the slide. If the, if the uh, rack and pinion slide there ever failed that you can put a kind of a long pole in there with a wrench on the end of it and manually drive that particular gear. So that's what that is. Then directly under this same kitchen slide is where all the gray and black tanks are draining. And so when this slide is pushed out, you know, it's obviously under that slide. It's not a real deep slide, but it is pushed out. So you kind of, you know, when you get to your campsite, it's better to hook all this up ahead of time because once that slides out, it is a lot harder to get under there, obviously. But it is off to one side. So typically if I need to get access and the slides out, I'll just slip over next to the tires there. So you can see real simple valves there on both of the gray tanks. It's got two gray tanks totaling about 70 gallons. If I recall, the the one that supplies the kitchen is much larger than the one that is on the bathroom. I want to say probably like a 70, 30 split, you know, so let's just say approximately maybe 50 gallons on the, uh, the kitchen, the galley area, and then maybe 20 to 25 on the bath uh, area. So uh, for us, it works out pretty good. We end up filling them up about the same rate. And then the black tank, I think is around 30 to 40, if I'm not mistaken. And the black tank valve is, you can see right back up in there. There we go. And that is the black tank. So it is a little bit protected back there. And the uh, it's a cable driven valve, whereas these are just, you know, the valves are right there. So that's the only three uh, valves for the, for the gray and black tanks right there. Just three tanks. And it does have a freshwater tank which is gonna be directly under here. And if I recall, it's about 50 gallons, but you'll have to check me on that one. All right, moving back along here. So it's got uh, dual axles, obviously, two 6,000 pound axles. And it came with, uh, trying to remember, it wasn't Trailer King or Westlake. I forget now the brand of tires that it came with, but uh, you know, they're kind of decent average, typical RV tires. And after about a year and a half, I said, you know, it's really better just to upgrade these and so i got the same size but i went with these saloons so it's the same size the st 235 80r 16 but these are just a way beefier tire 14 ply uh, g rated and so really really nice tire i'll probably do a review on those at some point but uh, yeah these saloon tires are really i mean they're almost like commercial trailer tires you just look at the the, the tread on them really nice tire and you can see there I've got some uh, pressure, tire pressure monitors on the, the valve stems there. Super helpful. And between the tires, I almost forgot to show you the suspension. So this has the Lippert Road Armor. And so this is kind of like the equalizer between the two axles. And it's got some kind of some rubber up in here on the top and the bottom. And so it kind of, you know, cushions it a little bit as the the axles flex between one another and that was a really really nice upgrade originally just came with a just a rigid equalizer from the factory and then i also added the uh the wet bolts so you can 
you know, grease up all your fittings there. Really nice to have that option. All right, and then over here you've got your furnace outlet. That is for the furnace. It's a, I want to say a 35,000 BTU. I could be mistaken there. And then moving back around, let me shift a little bit. Got your 50 amp electrical connection there. And when it's in storage, I just keep it hooked up to regular 15 amp. And then going down the back here, you've got your bedroom slide. And around the corner, it does have a bumper on the rear, you can see there. It does have storage in there. You can put more sewer hoses in there as well. And I went ahead and added a uh, two inch receiver on there, had somebody weld on a two inch receiver. That way you can put like a bike rack or something else on the, uh, the back of your rig there. So that's kind of a nice upgrade to add on. And then you've got a window on the back there. Of course, like any rig, it's wired for a backup camera, the Furion backup cameras there. And then it does have a ladder on the other side there. All right, well, let me jump over to the other side and we'll pick back up. All right, so moving around to the passenger side from the front here. So first thing in the front corner here, it is pre-wired for the Furion solar charge connection, the 10 amp connection. Pretty standard on a lot of RVs nowadays. And then right here, we've got our battery bank and I think I left it locked up actually. Let me unlock it real quick here. Now this particular rig uh, came with all different kinds of keys originally. And then at some point I went ahead and just uh, swapped out the ones that were different to the, uh, the Bauer Keto-like system. And so I'll talk more on that in a little bit, but it just makes it super easy because then you just have one key to carry around. So this is the battery bank. Now from the factory, it came with uh, just two lead acid batteries. And so one was in this compartment and then the other one was on the opposite side of this wall, as I showed you earlier in that, that front storage bay. But uh, you know, when you're talking lead acid batteries, most of the time, the ones that the dealer is going to throw in are going to be in the, you know, 60, 70 amp hour range. And so if you've got two of them, that's, you know, anywhere potentially between 120 and 140 amp hours. But you're only supposed to use half of your lead acid amp hour capacity. Otherwise, you're just going to ruin the batteries. They're just not meant to be discharged fully. And so, you know, that's really not much for a big fifth wheel to only have 60 to 70 amp hours of capacity. And so I went ahead and upgraded to lithium ion here and I went with this battery from Renogy. It's a smart lithium iron phosphate. Love it. It's uh, 100 amp hours. So not only do I have more amp hours than I did with the two lead acids, but now I can use that full 100 amp hour capacity. Uh, charges up a lot faster. Just to really a, a much better system overall. And so that, that was something that was swapped out there. You can see up top, there's some terminals where things come together on the positive and, and negative side. And then this right over here is the Victron uh, battery monitor system, the BMV 712. Got another video on that one as well. I'll put a link above if you wanna learn more about the Victron BMV 712. It's a great upgrade for any rig for sure. But what I like about this battery storage is it's separate. You know, the uh, the nice thing about these lithium ion batteries, you don't have to have them sitting upright like they are right now. You can tilt them on their side, put them in any direction. And so if I wanted to, I've got room in here actually to put a second lithium ion battery if I flip both of these and kind of turn them going upright, kind of like books. I can easily put one here and one there, maybe even a third one if I really wanted to, but uh, easily can fit two in here. I like it, it's a separate compartment, it's got its own door, so it's kind of nice how they did that. You know, some fifth wheels will have a single propane tank on both sides. So you'll come to this side and you'll have a propane tank, and then you'll go to the other side and have a propane tank. And I kind of like that, you know, they just put all the propane tanks on one side, and then you've got your battery box on the opposite side here. And then of course, these are your vents for the batteries, which I no longer need anymore. So they're just capped off inside. Same here on this guy as well. All right, going down the passenger side. Next up, we've got the passenger side storage. So this is the exact same storage as the other side. It is passed through and it's kind of dark in there, but there is a little light there off the side, a motion light on the one side. And then this switch down here is your front cap light. I'll just show you what that looks like real quick. It's the LED strip on the bottom there. That front cap kind of helps at nighttime to light things up a little bit. It's not too bright. 
And then you've got a battery disconnect here, it basically just cuts power to everything in the rig uh, to you know save your battery if it's in storage there. All right, so really decent sized storage compartment. Now this is a straight frame fifth wheel, you know, meaning that the frame runs from the, the back of the unit all the way to the front. It's just one solid straight frame. So it's not a, a drop frame or a Z frame like some of the more expensive units. And so when you're looking at this storage and saying, wow, that door is really kind of small. Well, it's because it's a straight frame. That you know frame goes all the way across to the front there. And so uh, that's why the door is a little bit smaller. Now, some manufacturers I've seen will do kind of like a cutout here where they will cut down into this you know, technically this is kind of in line with the frame down here, but they will cut out into that and almost have like a little plastic insert that's inserted in there that you can have then a bigger door to get more access to this area. And that's kind of a nice touch, but obviously, you know, costs more money. And so this one just opted to have a single door above the frame, but it is a really decent sized storage compartment. And you can see here, I've got a nice slide tray for Moride in there. Just makes it really easy to get your stuff in there. These trays come out about, I think 60% roughly of the length. And basically the length goes all the way back inside to where the wet bay is there on the other side of those reels that I showed you. So it just makes getting things a lot easier. All right, you can see up above the decking, it's all aluminum, of course. It's got some foil on there to help control the temperature. And then I added a little access door off to the side here. And you'll see why here in just a minute. There's a little ball valve up there. And I went and added a nice little spray port off to the side. So I think if you remember on the other side in the, uh, the wet bay, there was that uh, shower that I upgraded, the garden hose sprayer. So that same sprayer then can also connect over here to the spray port, the spray port. And so that way, you know, you've got one hose, one garden spigot, you can plug right in here. Super handy, especially when you're, you know, at the beach, somewhere where it's muddy, you can just plug in your, your uh, hose there and kind of let it connect off to the, the, the stairs going into the, the rig. And then you can, you know, rinse your feet off, have your kids rinse everything off before they bring all that inside the rig. So I went ahead and did add this panel, it just makes it really easy to shut that particular uh, spigot off, especially in the winter time. And then it also gives you access to these uh, Lippert control boxes. Now these are for the two slides up front here. These are for the, uh, the Swintec slides from Lippert. And so really having this door here is just a nice touch because then you can get access if you've ever had to, to service them. I have not needed to yet, but if I didn't have the door there, you'd have to take off you know, this whole entire panel here all the way to the, the front there. So that is a nice feature to add as well. But yeah, pretty nice, pretty nice storage here on the rig. Up front, basement storage. Now, one thing I'll say about these doors here is you can see they're they're a little bit more on the thin side. I mean, there's there's definitely thicker doors out there. I think in some of the later builds, they thicken these up a little bit. But that's probably one thing where they they made a cost conscious decision to save some money and you know, they're the doors at the end of the day, but it would be nice to have maybe just a little bit thicker doors on these larger ones here. Then you can see you got your speakers here, two stereo speakers hooked up to the unit inside. And let me pan up and you can kind of see the awning here. So the awning runs pretty much uh, right from here all the way to the back door here as well. So I believe it's about probably 20, to 22 feet and just your standard black awning the top is black and then the underside is white there uh, this one's from dometic nothing too fancy it does have an led strip that is mounted at the top there in other words it is not rolled up in the awning right now so if you turn on that outside strip light it's going to project light even with the awning closed so that's kind of a nice nice touch it's uh it is a pretty bright light it's um you know, not the kind of thing you want to leave on all night because you'll probably get some complaints from your neighbors, but it is a nice bright light. You'll notice that there are no porch lights or any other lights on the outside here. So it's really just that awning light on the outside. So it probably would have been nice if they, you know, maybe added a porch light above the entry doors or something like that. 
Uh, one thing I did do is add some kind of some ambient lighting at nighttime underneath. If I can show you a picture of what, what those look like here. And I did this on all uh, four sides. So you can kind of see up there with an amber lens on it. And I'll try to throw up an image of what they look like at nighttime when they're powered on. But I did one under each doorway and then one on the opposite side, kind of like a mirror image by the wet bay and the landing gear in the back. And it really just helps at nighttime. You know, sometimes you want, you want to light up your campsite a little bit, maybe for critters that are coming by at nighttime or, or just so you can see if you look out a window. And, but you really don't want to turn on that full awning light and have that running, you know, all night long. And so I went ahead and added those four amber lights and they're great. You know, the bugs don't seem to be attracted to them so much. So definitely a nice, nice touch. Uh, and by the way, a lot of these upgrades that you're going to see in this tour are not things that I just, you know, came up with out of, out of my mind. There were things I saw on other rigs, you know, camping, uh, a lot of times other higher end rigs, really. And I said, hey, that's a nice, you know, nice touch that makes the camping experience more enjoyable. And it doesn't cost that much to do. Why not, you know, add it in? So can't take credit for those things. Then it's got your main door, your main entry door here. It's a, it's a decent width. I believe it's a 30 or 32 if I'm not mistaken. And then it has this nice grab bar uh, that extends out here. And I will open these up here in just a little bit. But you can see a nice grab bar on there. And then going back to the, uh, the Bauer Keto-like system. So this one does have the Bauer NE Bluetooth keypad there. It's a really cool lock because not only can you get in with a code, but you can also get in with your phone. Uh, that you've paired to it and so i've got another video on that particular lot i'll put a link up above here but really really great lock to have on your on your rig all right moving right along the next slide is going to be your dinette slide and you can see here it is the 378 fl it's got the aluminum structure of course made in the usa and it's got the extended season package which you know basically just means it has a enclosed underbelly with heated you know some ducts down there and some insulation pretty common on most rigs today on this slide here you do have a, a tv mount it matches the same mount that's in the bedroom in the master bedroom and so that way if you want to bring your tv out here you theoretically can you just slide it off the mount in the bedroom bring it right out here of course you've got a cable jack and then a, a power out there as well you've got another stabilizing auto level jack right there Got the same saloon tires on this side, as well as the suspension, the road armor. All right, and then of course behind the tires are the rear landing gear, the rear auto level. And then take a look. So this one has on both of the entry doors, it has the solid step from Lippert. And I, what I really like about the Lippert version of these solid steps, I mean, they're pretty, pretty common in most RVs now. Uh, compared to the ones that fold up. But what I like about the Lippert version is that this top step here is a little bit larger than the rest of the steps. So as you're you know, coming out of your rig, you've got just a bigger landing basically on that first step compared to the, the more ride version. And these are just the basic uh, solid step ones. They don't have any kind of uh, pneumatic you know, uh, prop, gas prop on them. So you do have to lift them up by hand. I've never really been bothered by it. They're not that heavy and you're just you know swinging them up now one downside i'll just mention this and you can kind of see if you are storing your rv somewhere and you don't have a lot of room on the outside of the rig you know these steps every time you bring them in and out you know they have to fold in and out so they have to go up and down into your doorway and so if you don't have a lot of distance you know side to side between maybe your rig and your neighbor's rig you may not be able to get your your steps out so some rigs will put the solid steps on the front door and then have folding steps on the rear for that reason to kind of give you another entry port but uh, this one just has the solid steps on both and for me it's fine you know if I had to give you an estimate on how much space is uh, between the rig and the wall here I would say it is about four and a half feet approximately and you know it probably could be a little bit tighter than that because I don't I don't have to push uh, push the levelers in here on the feet all the way I can easily, you know, fold up those steps with the distance right now. So uh, you might be able to get away with four feet of clearance between your rig and the, the wall or the other, uh, your neighbor's rig. 
But that's just one thing to think about with these solid steps. They are really nice, uh, but they do take up room to fold in and fold out. And the only other downside I'll mention on those real quick is that you know, you're folding them up into your rig each time. So as you can imagine, when you go camping, you get all kinds of sand and dirt and dust on the steps. And so you, you have to make sure you clean them every time and kind of blow them off, spray them off before you fold them up. Otherwise you can have all that debris inside your rig. All right, going to the back here, uh, let me point out one thing about the frame. I, I know I mentioned earlier, it is a straight frame, which is true except for this back section here. So most fifth wheels, that are straight frame have just a straight frame all the way from the front to the back here. So in other words, from the back, the frame would be up here and it would go all the way to the front. But you'll notice this one's a little bit different here. It has this weird drop frame in the rear and that's due to the special floor plan. There really aren't a lot of fifth wheels that have this. Most of the fifth wheels that have a drop frame have that drop portion toward the front. And you can see here that drop portion, it starts, right here so you can see there that up underneath here the frame the main frame is up there and then it drops down right here and then continues to the end there so you know that's really driven by this floor plan that's really unique but let me just kind of give you what that practically does to the rig so as you can imagine that frame member sticks down a good you know 10 inches lower than a standard fifth wheel that has a straight frame because even fifth wheels with a with a drop frame, you know, that drop frame's up front, and then back here, that frame usually is right in line with the skirting. So this one does sit down a little bit lower in the back. And you know, the only downside to that is if you're driving through an area where the grade is really uneven, maybe it's got a steep uh, you know, driveway leading in off the street or or just something where the grade changes suddenly you might kind of bottom out on the back of your rig. And so what I went ahead and did is, you can see on the back there, I've got some rollers on either side that I had welded onto the back there. And that way, if I'm ever in a situation where I'm gonna you know, bottom out on the rear, at least those rollers, they're just steel rollers, will pick up the slack for me. And they're just mounted directly off to the frame there. So that's one downside about this, this uh, floor plan and having a, a uh, drop frame in the back like that one, but uh, I think the benefits outweigh it, but just something to consider there. All right, and then back here on the back side, like you saw before, it's got a ladder, you know, going all the way up there and all the LEDs, all the clearance lights and everything, uh, tail lights are all LED. So that is pretty nice on this particular rig there. And off to the back there, I don't think I showed that, there is a antenna on the back. Uh, cell, cell booster antenna. And I've got another video I did on that particular mod. Really, really helpful. That was one of those things that I never really thought I would make use of having a cell booster antenna until I camped somewhere and had, you know, zero cell uh, service or really weak cell service. And at that point realized, hey, this is really something that would be handy. So that's the outside of the rig. You can see on the, the windows, they're just your standard windows. They're not frameless and they have some really good sized windows actually this one's in the master bedroom you'll see that one in a minute this one's in the hallway but some really decent sized windows to let lots of uh, natural light in there well let's go ahead and uh, walk through the rig with the slides closed first and that way you can kind of get an idea of what it's like going through the rig when everything's closed up and then we'll open everything up and go through the inside so we're going in the back door here. When you've got all the slides pushed in, you actually have to go in this back door because that's where the control panel is to get the slides out. But you can see here, this back door, this is the hallway to the bathroom. You got plenty of access to get into the bathroom. So if you're you know, pulled over at a rest stop, then you can easily use the restroom uh, without opening any slides. So that's kind of nice here. You got your control panel. You kind of see through the, the window there a little bit what it looks like, the dinette slide right here. And if I kind of shoot up over here, you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like all closed up. So basically with this dinette slide pushed in, you can't really get any further than this section here. But if we pan around and go this way, you can see you can still get to the rear loft in the back here. And you can also get to the rear master bedroom as well. And so you can see what that looks like with the slide pushed in. So you can actually, you could take a nap, you could use the bathroom all with the slides pushed in at a rest area. So that's kind of nice.
All right, well, let's get the slides pushed out and then we'll begin the inside tour. Now, this is the dining room slide here. We'll do that one first. They are all rack and pinion slides here, the dinette slide and the other kitchen slide that we'll do next. And then the front two slides in the front living room are the Swintec. And then the one in the bedroom is just a real basic kind of electric uh, gear driven type slide. As you can see here going out, these are the rack and pinion slides are pretty reliable. Uh, pretty easy to use there. The floor kind of drops down there at the last second. And then so once you get this dinette slide open, you really can access the whole rig. So then you've got access to the kitchen. Even though this kitchen slide is pushed in right now, you can still make use of the stove. You've got use of the sink and of course the refrigerator, which uh, if you're wondering, you can get to the refrigerator from the other door. You just can't really go anywhere else. But you actually can walk up here into the family room. There's a little bit of room to get your knee and kind of hop over that chair and get access to the front there. So let's get the rest of the slides pushed out and we'll finish the tour. Now, if you need to refill your popcorn, now would be a great time to push pause and resume when you're done. But otherwise we are going inside. Here you can see we walk right into the front door, the main door, and we are right in the kitchen here. Really spacious L-shaped kitchen. I'm just gonna do a quick pan over to the dinette, walk to the rear. Give you a quick preview of course you saw the bathroom here on the right going back into the master just a quick pan around and here's what makes this unit really special is this upper loft kind of like a bunk area for for your kids really special we'll take a more detailed look here in just a minute but these steps going down are what make this floor plan unique and the drop frame that you saw in the back that is why this is necessary because you can see it's got two steps going down in there and that's what enables you to have the head height to have two levels and a fifth wheel that's still under 13.6 to be street legal. But going back into the front, we walk past the kitchen, the dinette area, into the family room, and we will start up here for the inside tour. So this unit is a front living room floor plan, and they're really trendy and popular right now. They give you a lot, and I mean a ton of space to gather and kind of sit around one another as a family and just enjoy each other. And you can see lots of windows in this particular unit. On both slides, it's got three windows. They all open up. And then you can see on both slides, on the opposing slides, it's got the love seats on both sides. Then going on to the middle and the top and the front here, you've got the entertainment area. It's got a nice big 50 inch TV, Jensen. And then on either side, some glass doors with some storage behind them just one shelf in between there great for dvds and other things that you want to store there let me back up here so you can kind of get a better better sight line and then below you've got some storage on either side double doors with a single shelf on the inside there then down below the tv you've got the am fm cd dvd player pretty typical in rvs nowadays this one's from jensen Works great, no complaints. And then on either side, you've got two speakers. And then it's got, of course, an A and B zone. So the A is inside, the B is the outside speakers that you saw earlier there. So that Jensen DVD player does feed the TV. So if you're watching DVDs, it's gonna be inserted there and it's gonna play up through the TV as well as the, uh, the sound. And same thing if you're watching TV. So it's kind of like almost like having a, a sound bar down below your TV. Then you got just a little bit of storage. And then you got your Greystone fireplace. Again, really common in RVs today. This one's got a 5,000 BTU electric heater inside, which is great. You know, if you're staying in a uh, campground where you get electricity and it's just a little bit cool, you can really just, you know, turn this fireplace on. Don't even have to worry about your, your furnace and using up your propane. So really nice. And then it's got a little countertop, little wooden countertop that you can set some things on. You can see behind it's got that accent light and a switch to turn the light on and off. It's got a USB charger, AC outlet, and then back behind there is also a jack for the, uh, the cable and the satellite, which uh, speaking of, the TV antenna is right up here. And it's one of the antennas you don't have to crank anymore, a lot nicer than the older ones. You know, you had to remember to crank them down and up. So this one's just uh, basically you, you kind of push up and spin it around till you get the best signal. So it's sort of directional, but works pretty good for the most part there. 
And I really, you know, just on a side note, haven't noticed much of a difference in uh, reception between, you know, this antenna that sits pretty much flat on the roof, just about maybe four to six inches above the roof compared to the old wind guards that would, you know, crank all the way up. Really the reception's about the same. So they've done a great job improving those products. But yeah, really nice entertainment center. Let me back up again so you can get a better vantage point. And just really nice how the love seats are on either side. And these, both of these love seats do fold out into beds, pretty standard. I'll throw a picture of what that looks like up so you can get an idea. But they're about double sized. So uh, two double beds, you can fold both of the love seats out at the same time if you'd like. Great for kids to sleep on. Probably, you know, not something as an adult you'd want to sleep on for weeks at a time, but for kids, they absolutely love it. Works great. And we pan around here and you can see the opposite side of the living area. You've got your theater seating there, manual recliners, they work great. You can see the, the uh, vendor they chose at the time this one was built has little LEDs at the bottom there, a little LED strip, and then around the cup holder. And just a manual pull lever there to recline the chairs. Very comfortable. It's kind of a you know leather-like material and uh, yeah, no complaints. A little storage area in the middle there. And you've got a heating duct on the floor there in the, in the floor for the furnace. And let me pan up here to the ceiling. You can see this one has the Coleman Mach ACs. And you know, they work great. I've had Dometic and Coleman. The, the Coleman Mach AC seem to be just a little bit quieter, maybe, and they seem to cool just a little bit better than Dometic, but uh, really pretty much the same. I think about you know five years ago or so, Dometic uh, had a, a supplier problem with one of their vendors and they were leaking coils. And so a lot of the RV manufacturers switched to Coleman Mach ACs and they're, they're great, no complaints there. Let's talk about the head height here. I'm going to try to spin the camera around so you can see what it looks like here. I'm about six foot uh, tall and you can see here that when I go up to this front section here, it gets a little bit shorter. And so right here, my head collides. But in the main area, I've got a good, you know, probably uh, two to three inches above my head here. So it works pretty good. All right. Sorry about if I made you dizzy there. But yeah, plenty of head height up here. And then of course the AC is ducted and the ducts are all connected together. So whether you're running the front AC or the one in the middle that I'll show you here in a minute, all of them are gonna run through the ducts. Of course, the closer you are to the, the air supply, the air is gonna be stronger naturally, but uh, it will run all the way to the front and back of the rig. We'll just check out this view from the living area looking down into the kitchen. I mean, this really is why people buy front living rooms. You get not only the, the expansive space up front, but then you get these great views looking down into the rest of the rig. And it just feels, it just feels so home-like, you know, like you're in a, a split level house and you've got a, another level up here. So really nice views going down into the kitchen. And then you just got one, two, three steps going down here. Now, just before I show you the kitchen, let me do a quick pan over here. So right here, we've got our Victron BMV 712 battery monitor. Definitely recommend doing one of these guys, no matter what rig you have. It just, you know, gives you clear insight into what's going on with your battery. And it's really pretty easy to install. I've got a video on that as well. And I'll make sure there's a link thrown up there for you to, to check that one out. Then over here, these are switches for the the amber lights exterior lights that kind of throw light down below the rig underneath the rig and that's something that i added there and you saw it in a picture earlier there so that's what that switch does there and then let me just pan around so you can see you know coming in from the entry what that looks like going up into that front living room it's got a really nice banister there with a newel post and uh, balusters really makes it feel homey i've seen a lot of the the more recent builds on this particular model that they just ended up putting a solid wall here, which is okay, but I think the banister with the newel posts and balusters really, you know, really makes this feel more home-like there. There's a little bit of storage behind there as well. You can see, you can put things uh, while you're on the road as well. And then down below, right next to the steps, this is something that I added when we first got the rig. You know, there's really not a good place to put your shoes, especially when you got, you know, kids and you multiply times two or three pairs. And so I discovered that right under the the uh, the uh, living room right here, there was a compartment that was just kind of blocked off. You know, the water heater is over here to the left. 
and then pretty much all this space was just kind of closed off and you know it was a cost decision they didn't you know trying to keep the cost down but i just went ahead and opened up framed an opening and uh, bought a extra cabinet door and then finished it off inside here so you can see you got a really nice big expansive area to put your shoes and kind of keep them out of the way so that's a super handy feature that i, I hope if they're ever watching this video, they'll make that a standard feature on this particular model because you always need more storage when you're in an RV. All right, well, let's check out the kitchen now. We'll pan around here and start with the refrigerator. So this is the Everchill 12 volt compressor fridge. And uh, when we were looking at this rig, I remember it was pretty new to the market at that time, the 12 volt compressor fridges. And uh, it was really something new to the RV industry at the time, this was about two years ago. And so I was a little leery about this particular model. I just didn't know what to expect. Didn't know if it'd be reliable. Some people complained about noise. And uh, I can say hands down after two years, this is one of the coolest innovations in the RV industry to be able to have a 12 volt compressor driven fridge. And really the advantages here are this fridge is gonna cool just like the one in your house that's on 120 volts that has a compressor on it. You know, RV fridges are great that run on propane, but they take forever to cool down. And then, you know, every time you open the door, you got to shut them real quick to make sure all that cool air doesn't escape. Whereas here, you've got a compressor driven refrigerator that's very much like the one in your house. Very similar experience. I can say noise wise, you know, sometimes you'll hear a, a little bit of a, a rattling when the compressor turns on, kind of similar to maybe a dorm refrigerator but it's not loud at all. Nothing that, you know, you would pick up on right away and say, ooh, what's that noise? Just a, you know, real, real soft uh, compressor noise when it, when it does cycle on there. So great refrigerator there. I'll show you what it looks like inside. I believe this one is 12 cubic foot, if I'm not mistaken. And for us, that is plenty of space. We have never run out of space. Even when we've taken, you know, week long trips, plenty of space to put food on the inside and then of course you got your freezer up top stays super cold you know i think if anything the thing i've noticed with this guy is it almost gets too cold sometimes where i have to throttle it back so a lot of times i'll keep the the inside setting there uh usually around two and a half to three and that seems to keep everything right around 36 37 degrees in the fridge portion so definitely great fridge a lot of the later builds are going to have a larger 12 volt compressor fridge that fits in about that same space. I think it's a, a quad door. And you know, I'm sure that's a great fridge as well. At the time we got this one built, I think that was just not as common of an option at the time. And so went ahead and settled for this guy. But I definitely recommend doing the 12 volt fridge if you're on the fence on that guy. All right, so this is kind of an L-shaped kitchen. You can see here when you walk in, it's got almost an island, but it's more of an L shape the way it's attached there. Now the later builds that I've seen, uh, instead of having the L-shaped, they have an, a true island. And the island is pushed out this way just a little bit more so that you've got some walkway and separation here between that little you know, coffee bar, taco bar that's up against the wall. So you know, pros and cons. I kind of like the fact that it's attached because I was able to do some upgrades uh, with the plumbing and electrical by having this kind of like a chase almost running along the floor. Uh, with this L shape. So, I mean, that's kind of a pro. You get a little bit more counter space because it's an L countertop. The downside, of course, is, you know, when you're in here, you know, it's pretty much one person. You know, if you're in here and you, you start doing your business and someone else comes behind you, you're pretty much stuck in the kitchen until they get out. There's enough room to slide by, but it's just, you know, it's not practical. So, you know, would you get the L shaped kitchen or the island kitchen, kind of depending on your build date? Well, it's really entirely up to you. I think both have pros and cons, but uh, I do like the L shape. I think it's kind of nice there. All right, next to the refrigerator, we've got the standard Furion stove and uh, the cooktop and the oven there. Pretty common nowadays in RVs. It's got room to put, you know, decent size uh, baking sheets and whatnot. Uh, you know, no complaints there. It's nice to have the light inside. Some of the other models they used to make didn't have lights inside your, your oven. So it made it kind of hard. And then below, it's just a continuation, just a little storage drawer down there. So that's kind of nice. And they've got the cool blue lights, of course, on there. You can turn those on and off. And then the cooktop just has a glass top that folds up, like you've probably seen before many times. Three burner stove, works great, no complaints. 
All right, then behind the stove, you can see there's a, a backsplash. It's not a not real tile, but it looks very real. It's It feels three-dimensional. It's just some kind of you know sheet of blue on with a, a plastic uh, mold on top of it. But it holds up really good. It looks real. And it just kind of goes along with the decor in the rig. So definitely, I think that's a, a good choice on the designer's part there. It does have solid surface uh, countertops there. Uh, I think they're LG, if I recall and just a real clean pattern with just a little bit of speckle in there. And then just above the stove, you got your microwave. It's not a convection microwave, just a standard one. It's the Furion version there and it works great. No complaints on the microwave, it's decent sized. And then directly below that, you've got the range hood to feed outside. It's got an LED light underneath and then a fan to suck all that out and you can probably hear that on the video the fan makes a good bit of noise you know so when you're cooking it does uh it does kind of intrude if you're trying to have a conversation but that's pretty pretty standard on most most rigs and then next to the microwave you've got a little bit of storage there to the left and then you've got your pantry space there so this one is a pretty deep cabinet I'll just give you a quick peek inside there it goes all the way back to the back it's got a center fixed shelf and then directly below there you've got one two three four drawers below there that all pull out that are pretty deep there and then a very large cabinet to the left of the oven and then back here the black grate to the grill is your furnace kind of your access panel and also where the air gets sucked in and you do have a little outlet over to the right that I added there just makes it easy for a, a coffee bar but uh, that does not come from the factory. It does have an outlet over here though. It just seemed for us, we really wanted to, to have an outlet right off to the, the right side against the wall there. All right, over on the sink side, you've got a single farmhouse style sink with one of those pull down sprayers, faucets. Nice big sink, pretty, pretty deep. And then of course nowadays they just give you these grates to go over half the sink instead of your covers they used to have. I'm going to give you just a little bit broader view so you can get a better angle of that kitchen sink area. And directly below the kitchen sink, you've got two more double doors. And that is fully accessible. All the storage space underneath, room for a trash can. And then another door next to that one and then two more drawers. And then that bottom one is just kind of like an access panel. And it gives you room to access the converter, charger, all the electronics you'll see on the other side. So very easy, I will say this rig is very easy to work on as far as the electronics, everything's very accessible, very easy to get to. And then on the end of the peninsula here, the L shape, you've got a little towel bar, very nice. You can rotate these in different directions. And then directly below there is for the, the central vacuum. So this is something that's really, really handy. All you have to do if you've never seen one of these is kind of flip it up and it turns on that vacuum right away. Got two little LEDs down there. This is super handy. You know, when I first saw these in rigs, I thought they were kind of gimmicky and I thought, yeah, I don't really think I'd make use of that. But you know what happens is you've got your, your main door right here, okay? And so people are coming in, your kids are coming in, they're bringing stuff in on their feet even when they take their shoes off. And so this area just kind of starts collecting dust and sand and whatnot. So you can just take a real quick, you know, a, a whisk broom and just kind of slide it right over here and suck it right into the, the central vac. So that's a really super handy upgrade. Definitely recommend considering that in your rig. It just kind of, it, it helps you cut down on the time you spend cleaning and, you know, keeping things neat. Just makes it real easy. So that's a great feature there. And uh, while we're in here, you can see on the floor, it's got just a pretty standard uh, vinyl uh, type flooring. It's not plank, individual planks. It's just kind of on a roll, you know, they just rolled out that looks like planks. Uh, nothing too special about the floor. Pretty, you know, pretty generic, but it's a, it's a nice tone, nice color. It's held up well. Then on the other side of the peninsula, you can see here there is a heating duct, then the uh, CO sensor, the carbon monoxide sensor. And then directly below here, you've got your electrical panel with your breakers and your fuses. I'll just give you a quick pan so you can see what kind of breakers and fuses it comes with standard. I went ahead and labeled them just to make it a little bit more clear. But it is a 50 amp rig, so plenty of power. And uh, really, again, easy access if you ever need to, to work on anything. 
And then directly above that is where the central vac is uh, located here. So you can open up this little slot here and then actually plug a hose into there. And that hose will reach the entire rig front to back. So, I mean, you don't need another vacuum. You can go all the way to the back bedroom and you can reach all the way to the front. So really, really handy there. You got another outlet there off to the side and then, oh, I don't think I hit this. You got a little uh, tower of power there as well. And this one I really like, it's got a wireless charging feature on there as well. And so if you've got a phone that supports that, you can just drop your phone on there and it starts charging your phone wirelessly. Very nice. It's got some USB-C ports on there as well and standard USB. I like that you can just kind of put it out of the way when you're not using it. And then also by the sink, I forgot to mention this, uh, it does have a filtered water faucet for drinking water and down below is a more restrictive filter that does a little bit more thorough job than the one you saw in the wet bay. And that's really my favorite approach to doing uh, water filtration. That way, you know, you get a more refined water where you're not needing that pressure that you need for the whole rig and you get a filter that's maybe a little more restrictive to give you a better drinking water. So that's really nice to have there. And then going up above the L shape, you've got some more glass cabinets, glass door cabinets going into the storage area there really nice you know the only downside is you do see in them so you can see it kind of looks a little a little bit messy because you see everything in there all the different colors and whatnot um, but let me show you one thing here in the back of this rig and that is the we boost you know you saw on the outside on the ladder the antenna and this is where it all gets fed to and there is an outlet in there as well that i went ahead and added as a backup it's uh, by default powered 12 volt but i went ahead and added a an ac outlet just in case uh, so we got that ready to go. All right, so that is mainly the kitchen. You can see there's a little bit of accent lighting above that kitchen slide. The kitchen slide runs the full length of the kitchen right up to the banister. But yeah, really nice decor. I mean, I think they did a great job on the colors when they picked everything out. And then let me hit over here real quick. This is the, the control area. So of course on this side, you've got the controls that you saw earlier. And then on this side, you've got your, your touchscreen. So you're gonna have a touchscreen similar to this one, pretty much any rig that's got the, you know, the Lippert six point leveling, maybe even the four point leveling, they're gonna come most of them with a screen like this one. So really in here, all this does is serve as another uh, access point for your leveling. And it's uh, some kind of Android based system. But uh, you know, you really don't need to use this too much. Most of the time you're outside using the access panel out there, but this kind of lets you go through and see what kind of pitch or roll the rig is at. And if you want to manually adjust the, uh, the jacks, the supports, you can do it all from right here. So that's pretty much all you do on that screen. It doesn't do lights or anything else in the rig. Then directly below that, you've got your two thermostats. These are attached to the, the Coleman Mach AC units. Of course, you got one in the, the front living room, and then you also have one here in the kitchen. And so those are your two AC units right there, and they are both controlled right here. So this is where the temperature readings are gonna come in to the unit. And these are uh, upgraded. They have the Bluetooth connectivity, which is really nice because you can then from your phone, maybe like you're used to at your house, you can control these uh, whether you're in your bed in the back of the rig or in the front, you can you know change the temperature in the middle of the night without getting out of bed. So that's a nice feature uh, to have there on the Bluetooth connectivity. Then down below, you've got a switch here for the accent lighting above the kitchen slide, a little LED strip. And then you've got your 120 volt switch for the, the ceiling fan, which is kind of you know halfway in the kitchen and then pointed toward the, uh, the living area there. So it works great. The, you know, the air circulation in here, you know, I was a little uh, reluctant initially, just not sure how well having the two units up front here and then nothing in the back, you know, cause a lot of times you'll find one unit in the front and then one in the very back of a, a long fifth wheel. But for us, it, it hasn't been an issue. I will say one thing I did to help is added on the vents. Most of these registers here all came uh, with fixed registers that were just open all the time. And I, it was super easy just to find the, you know, the cutout dimensions of that circle, the diameter, and uh, just order some that have louvers on them so you can close them. So by closing these ones in the front, you know, some air still leaks out of there, but it kind of pushes the air more toward the back of the coach, which is a lot of times when you're sleeping where you're going to want that air anyway. So 
definitely something to consider if you're looking at the 378FL, you might wanna take those registers and, and swap them out. All right, let's take a pan over here to the dining area. Really nice windows. It's got windows on all side, really big, large windows. And you know, of course right now the rig is in storage and it's covered uh, on, on at least one side and then a roof. And so this is the side that doesn't get any sunlight, but you can see even with all these, uh, the windows in storage, it still has quite a bit of light. And then above it's got some real simple LED pucks, little wood trim up there. And all these windows, just like the ones in the living area, all have the, the roller shades, the slow rise roller shades. They're not MCD, I think they're American shade or United shade is the vendor on these. Then you've got your dinette table and it does have a leaf that folds up. Gives you a little bit more space there. So plenty of eating space, you know, family of four, five, uh, six might be pushing it, you know, as far as everyone being able to sit around the table, but uh, plenty of room for four people for sure. It does come standard with the four dinette chairs and uh, they've got that, you know, flip up chair like most of them have with some storage underneath. Does have carpet there, you know, that's one thing that uh, some of the new rigs I've seen have a, almost like a boat uh, woven material that they'd find on a boat, like a pontoon boat. I think that's a great choice for an area like this because, you know, when you got kids and even, you know, sometimes I'm a little sloppy, you drop food on the floor and it gets right on the carpet there. So that's one thing that I think uh, hopefully in a future build, they might swap that out and put some some of that nice woven material down there, just something that helps out with the, with the stains or whatnot. And of course, you've got your fire extinguisher, just like all the rigs uh, for code, little, uh, Hand sanitizer there, handy right next to the door. And then you got some little wall hooks that I went ahead and add there just to make it easy to hang some coats. You don't really have a, a coat closet when you walk in here. And so that kind of helps to give some, some place to land all that stuff. The dinette slide is nice and tall. You know, I have no issues hitting your head going into that dinette slide there. You know, you might say it's a, a little bit tight from, uh, you know, from side to side here it's you know it's snug i'll put it that way it's it's got room to move around but if you're sitting on one of the inside chairs and you want to get out yeah you're probably going to have to almost like a movie theater everybody's got to get out on that side in order for you to get out so but i mean it's a it's a compact rig and you know if they made the slide too much bigger it'd be running into that hallway so uh, so really i think all in all it works out just fine so then going away from the kitchen, just do a quick pan across there. You can see that shifts you then to the hallway, which leads you to the back of the rig there. So let me start walking back there. You can see it's got a nice big window. I love how they put that window there. That easily could have been something they skipped, but I think that's great. Let's a lot of natural light in on your campsite where the awning is and everything. All right, then you've got your bathroom door there. We'll take a peek in there just a minute. I'm going to swing around so you can see the uh, the controls a little bit better. So, you know, right here, they've kind of split everything up. So you've got a, a slide room control down here. That's the, the dinette slide. Then you've got your awning in out. You've got your your kitchen slide over here, the in out. And then you got your water pump, water here, some interior lights, and then your exterior awning lights. You've got your standard, uh, you know, standard four LED tank monitor and battery monitor there. And then just above, you've got your two Swintec slides that are controlled up in the front living room there as well. And then just add a little propane tank monitor as well. Super easy there. So I think one thing they could have done a better job here was combining all of this into one control panel. You know, it looks kind of like uh, an afterthought a little bit that they've got, you know, one slide down here and then another slide on and just, you know, could have been nicer if they had a bigger control panel that had everything all encased in one single location so that's something that probably in the future i would imagine they will they will change on some future builds let's pan around now to the bathroom and take a look in there so the bathroom door is a traditional hinge door so you can see with the hallway being narrow if we open that door you can't kind of open it and go through at the same time so i'll show you what i mean by that you can see here how it goes right up to that wall almost. You only have about two or three inches of clearance, but it does clear. And so a lot of times if no one's in the bathroom, we'll just kind of leave that, that door open and you still do have room to, to sneak on by as well. 
So let's take a look inside the bathroom. All right, now I apologize, I don't really have a wide angle lens, so I'm trying to give you the best angle to show you everything here. But it's a pretty standard RV toilet there, and then you've got your, your shower, really good sized shower. Uh, that is about, I believe, a almost, uh, it's four and a half, almost five feet shower. And it goes all the way back there, and then it's got the glass tri uh, sliding doors. And then just look at the headroom. I mean, tons of headroom, because remember, we are now toward the back of the rig, and this is a full profile height rig, and so the ceiling stays the same height from front to back. So you got tons of space. One of the things that we really liked about this particular uh, build is that you can see here the, the shower pan has a taller lip on it, right? And so actually this can be a bathtub or a shower, which is super handy. So you can see in the bathtub when you look down there, there's kind of a lip right here and then another lip up here. So this lip right here, you can fill that all the way up like a bathtub to that level. So that's kind of handy with kids or if, if you just like taking baths, uh, you can do that. And that's kind of unusual to find in a, in a fifth wheel in a main bathroom to have something like that. And then you can see in there, it does have the, the little seat it's, a, I think, a three-piece enclosure, two or three-piece enclosure. So the base is one piece. I guess just two pieces. Yeah, the base is one piece, and then the, the sides are, are one piece, all three sides there. All right, so really nice shower. Great, great job on the way they laid that out. And then you've got your vanity area. So, you know, one of the things about this rig is, obviously, the, the fact that you have a front living area and a master bedroom and a bunk or loft area, you're gonna have to sacrifice somewhere. And so you can see here in the bathroom, it's maybe a little bit smaller than some other fifth wheels. And that's really where the, the sacrifice on space was made to accommodate you know, the sleeping areas. So you'll see you do have a vanity area. You've got just a little bit of space over to the left there, but it is a, a little bit smaller on the countertop side. Then you do have storage below, fully accessible all the way through there. And then up top, when we got the, the rig, this actually was just a plain mirror that was mounted directly on the wall. And uh, it just seemed like a really big oversight that they didn't have a medicine cabinet. And so I just found a medicine cabinet that matched very closely to the wood tone and went ahead and took that mirror and remounted it on top. And that just gives us a lot more, more practical space to put all your, your stuff there. And I think in some of the later builds I've seen, they've, they fixed that. They've added in a medicine cabinet. So great job listening to the customer there. You see, you do have a skylight above that shower, but no one's going to be that tall to be able to poke their head through there. And then you do have a uh, power a powered fan up there. Now, it's going to come from the factory with just a standard one of the tiny little fans up there. And, uh, you know, for me, I think if I remember right, it was a manual crank. Yeah, it was. It was a manual crank vent. You know, so imagine every time you want to turn that fan on, you got to have someone who's, you know, either nine foot tall and be Goliath, or you got to have a stool to crank that vent open. And so it just made no sense whatsoever. So I went ahead and put in one of the, uh, the max fans there that has a powered, you know, up and down and a built in uh, shroud over the top there. So definitely something to consider if you're looking at this model. And uh, that also gives you a nice, nice little remote control on this side to, to access it from. Now, as far as the toilet goes, you know, this is a, a tighter bathroom. Uh, now, for those familiar with the 4P standard in the RV industry, it's kind of a new ISO standard. I'm still in training, so I can't officially uh, diagnose this, but just looking at it and the space around it and having used it myself, I'm going to say with 99% certainty that this would be awarded the 4P designation. So plenty of space in that bathroom. It does have a heat register down below, which... Uh, you know, we, we typically keep clothes just because you don't want stuff dropping in there. It would have been great, I think, if they could have hid that register maybe in the cabinet off to the side there or against one of the walls. That way you're not dropping stuff in there. But it does serve its purpose. So that is the bathroom. Working your way out, you've got just a little bit of room to put a trash can there off to the side. All right, well, let's work our way back to the main master bedroom here in the back. You can see it's real accessible from the bathroom, just a straight hallway going all the way to the back. And then off to the left, you do have your second exterior door as well. Most of the time when we're camping, we just, we kind of keep that master bedroom door open and don't, don't use the back door so much. 
Let's take a look back here in the bedroom first and then we'll check out the, uh, the loft there. So first up, notice how you do have this nice, very tall, long window. It lets tons of natural light in. Absolutely love the fact that they put that big window there. You do have two steps going down. And then if you look up before I go down, you can see there's a little bit of a cutout from the door up here to give you so you're not banging your head as you're coming into the, uh, the master bedroom there. All right, so we'll go ahead and walk down these two steps and give you a look here into the master bedroom. Pan around just a little bit so it is on a slide. The bed is on a, uh, not a super deep slide, kind of shallow, but it gives you a nice walk around area around the bed. I mean, I think for a fifth wheel, a lot of fifth wheels kind of have tight clearances around the bed and this one you got quite a bit of room on all three sides to walk around the bed so that's kind of another nice feature about the way this unit is laid out they they gave you a little bit more space in the bedroom so really nice the bedside is an rv king also known as an olympic queen so that's 66 inches wide so a standard king is going to be 72 inches and then a queen is 60. So an Olympic queen is kind of between a king and a queen at 66 inches. So it's kind of nice, you know, if you're bigger and taller, then it just gives you and your spouse a little bit more room in the back. I think the only downside to having that, that weird Olympic queen size is that it is a little bit harder to find sheets. I mean, they're not impossible to find, but just not obviously as common as a standard king and queen sheets but uh, it is a 66 inch wide bed and it came with uh, some kind of foam mattress you know it wasn't bad it was a, definitely a little bit on the thinner side and we just swapped it out for a uh, Casper uh, mattress similar to what we've got in the house and just makes it a little easier when you're traveling to have that same same bed that you're accustomed to so one thing that that did for those interested in upgrading their mattress if you get a, a taller mattress you know, I think the one that it came with was probably maybe eight inches thick, seven or eight inches, let's just say. So then if you put this thicker Casper mattress or another brand that's similar, that's gonna raise the height of your bed. So for me, I'm taller, not a big deal, but uh, for my wife, she is shorter and it, you know, it is a little bit harder to get into the bed. So just something to think about when you're upgrading your mattress in the RV. Let me pan around here to this side. You can get an idea of the dresser area. So you've got a six drawer chest and a little countertop on top of that. Great, you can put all your clothes and belongings in those drawers. Really nice that they thought of all that to give you that space. And then you do have a double wardrobe cabinet there with hanging space. Then uh, they do have the TV mount directly above that dresser area. It did not come with the TV, but the mount was already there and all you had to do was you know buy your tv put the mount on the tv and slide it in there i did have an issue though where the mount it just fell off in transit the whole tv fell off one time and busted and everything and i don't know if they just didn't go into the right you know structure behind the wall so that was something that i did have to come back and fix and and you know really glue it and put some bigger screws and make sure it's solid so it wouldn't happen again and for those curious, I believe that TV that I put in there was a 32 inch to give you an idea. It was either 30 or 32. So a nice, decent size for the back bedroom here. And then check out that tall window again. I mean, that's just great. The amount of natural light that pours into that back bedroom. And then of course you do have your, your standard roller shades. Now the window here and the other one in the hallway, they uh, actually know that one does have a Lambroquin. I was gonna say this one is one of the few windows that does not have a Lambroquin. And I think it was just because of the, you know, the clearance here, you're kind of coming in through that door and it would just, it would have stuck out too far. So that does let a little bit of light in, uh, in the mornings, but you can easily just put some little Velcro strips like that and, uh, you know, block out that light from peeking in. You're trying to get some rest. One thing that was kind of weird here, you can notice on the, the dresser top on this chest is they, they cut the, uh, the edge of this a little bit too deep. And so when the shade, when the roller shade comes down, when we first got it, it was you know colliding into this this top and just making it weird the way it would go up and down so i kind of notched it out tried to finish it off to make that work uh, i think in some of the newer builds i've seen they just putting a a narrower shade which is fine i mean that works it's just then more light comes in there so i think one solution would just be to you know this is a pretty long overhang it's a good you know probably two and a half inches here you can see them from my finger so they could just cut, cut that uh overhang a little bit shorter 
but uh, yeah, I mean, look in the bedroom, just tons of, of natural light. The, uh, the sun is starting to set here and you can just see how, how much natural light flows in to the bedroom area in the back. I think on some of the later builds, the back window here, they've made larger. They've made it go higher up toward the ceiling, which is a great, great idea. So that's one thing that they have changed since we got ours. And then above the, the uh, bed in the back there, you can see there is a nice headboard, real nice decor. That's just how it came. And then I went ahead and changed out the, they had LED puck lights, just the standard ones that are everywhere else in the RV. And went ahead and just changed these out from the LED puck lights to these, I think they're called dream lights and they're real common in the RV industry, but you can turn them from the, uh, the clear light color to a blue for, for a nighttime light, kind of a peaceful nighttime light there. So really nice bedroom. The slide really helps give you more space. And then of course you do have storage under the bed, pretty standard, nice, nice big storage area. And then this is really cool over here. So there's a cabinet here and you remember the staircase is directly on the other side of this wall going up, but they did provision a cabinet here and it is just the perfect size to have a combo washer dryer. So that's a really nice feature, you know, with everything else that this rig has going, you still have room for a combo washer dryer. Now this is something that I had to add obviously, but it was plumbed already and had the electrical and the, uh, the drain and everything all set and ready to go there. So great feature, definitely recommend having one of those. And then I think we added this, this mirror. I don't believe it came with the mirror originally. So it's kind of nice to have a full length mirror there. So that is the bedroom here. Just take a step back so you can see again. And I am six foot uh, two. Let me pan around here so you can see the, uh, the head height again here. Turn this around. Hopefully I'm not making you dizzy, but you can see here plenty of, of head height on the ceiling there. So really nice the way they laid that all out with the drop frame in the back. Let's go check out the loft and then we'll finish up. All right, so the loft has these stairs going up there. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six steps going up. It's got a little handrail. And then I went ahead and just added this little curtain kind of just to, you know, get some separation with light and cut down on the noise, but still have some good ventilation to get back in here. And so let's take a look at this loft area. So this is really what makes this floor plan so special combined with that front living space. So it's got perfect room for two twin size beds up here. And then it's got little storage between each one with little cubbies. So really nicely laid out there. And then in the back, you can see there, it's got a little shelf with some USB ports and AC outlets on both sides. So really well thought out. And it even has windows on both sides with those same, uh, same roller shades. Then over here, you've got this little notch and this is from that cutout in the floor below. And so it gives you almost like a little shelf area. And then directly above that area is another outlet and a cable jack if you did wanna add a TV here. And then you've got another storage compartment. So one on both sides there. And then to the right of the storage compartment over here, that's a little access panel. So you will notice up here that it does have two registers uh, two supplies for the AC, which is great. So that way you do have air conditioning in here. And so you'll notice then through the cubbies in the back of this, this one right here, and then in the other one up front, there's kind of a hidden chase behind those. And there is a duct, two ducts actually running down to the bedroom below. And so that way, you know, if you're wondering, does the bedroom below have AC? Yes, it does. Thankfully they did provision that, but really super cool loft area up here you know the uh, the kids love it because it gives them a special place where they can sleep and uh, it's about oh probably i'd say uh you know 30 inches tall from the bottom here to the the top so you know most kids are going to be on their knees or, or sitting upright and adults kind of on their knees crawling back here but uh it's really cool that they they figured out a way to to stack two levels in a fifth wheel All right, I'll just show you those air ducts in the master bedroom in case you were wondering. So it does have, have two, it's got one here and then one on the other side as well. So plenty of, plenty of uh, air conditioning in the back here. We've never really been in a position where we felt, you know, uncomfortable 
And I think a lot of that's due to having the registers in the front uh, with louvers, you know, being, a close, being able to close those off so you can direct some of that air to the back. I will say one nice thing about having your AC units toward the front of the rig as opposed to in your bedroom is if you've ever had one that's in your bedroom, you know, most of the time they're pretty loud coming on. And so here, both of the ACs are up front separate from the bedroom so we don't hear all night long the ac turning on and off on and off and you know it doesn't wake you up and you're not forced to have that fan running all night long as a sound machine in your bedroom like you would be if you you had in most fifth wheels where it's just right right above your head so that is kind of a nice feature i think that the only thing they should do is put louvers directly from the factory on those registers to make it easy to redirect the uh the airflow there all right, as I conclude the tour, I just wanted to walk outside with all the slides pushed out so you can get an idea of what it looks like on the outside with all the different slides pushed out. So you can see here the kitchen slide, living room slide, and then going back to the master bedroom slide in the rear there. And then I'll pan around back to the other side as well so you can get a glimpse of what that looks like. I will say those front living room slides on either, on either one, they are headbangers so if you're about six foot tall or six foot two like i am you got to really watch out because you will hit those guys and once you do it a couple times you won't do it again but it really hurts then you've got your dinette slide over here and then no more slides on the back so that kind of gives you an idea of what it looks like with all the uh with all the slides pushed out there this storage area here and if anyone's wondering is about 15 feet across and so it is plenty of room to actually walk through even with this deep dinette slide and still have plenty of room to access the fifth wheel well that concludes the tour of my personal rig the salem hemisphere 378 fifth wheel i hope you found this video helpful if you did give me a thumbs up i made it with the goal in mind of people that are in the market for this particular model or just wondering what is it like uh, from an owner's perspective after two years. So I hope you found it helpful. Hey, do me a favor, like I said earlier in the video, if there was an upgrade or mod in particular that you saw today and you'd like more information, maybe it uh, piqued your interest, if you can just drop me a comment below and that'll kind of gauge the interest level uh, for some future videos that I might create there. If you're not subscribed already, click that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.